بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه والتابعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين وبعد We praise Allah سبحانه وتعالى We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم His entire household, all his companions May Allah bless them all and bless every single one of us My beloved brothers and sisters The term dhikr is used often and it is important for us to know the context in which this word is used in the Quran and by the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For example, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu dhkurullaha dhikran kathira. O you who believe, remember Allah greatly, a great remembrance. So generally when we use the term dhikr, many of us would think that it means to sit down and to repeat the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or a statement of uh, acknowledgement of the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, subhanallah, alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha illallah and so on. So this is sometimes understood as being the only meaning of the term dhikr. If someone says this man is doing the dhikr of Allah, people would think he is sitting and repeating the praise of Allah or repeating the uh, words of acknowledgement of the status of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as I've just said. However, it's important to know that in the Quran, mostly when the term dhikr is used, it goes to something much deeper than that. So. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the word dhikr. Linguistically, it means the remembrance, the reminder, etc. And when it comes to the Muslim, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, for example, وَالَّذِينَ إِذَا فَعَلُوا فَاحِشَةً أَوْ ظَلَمُوا أَنفُسَهُمْ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهِ ذَكَرُوا اللَّهَ فَاسْتَغْفَرُوا لِذُنُوبِهِمْ those who have committed immorality, which is a sin, those who have committed immorality, or they have oppressed themselves, and then they remember Allah, and they seek forgiveness for their sin. So Allah continues to say, they are the ones who will be forgiven, they will be the inheritors of paradise, and so on. What does this mean? This means those who have borne in mind that they are the worshippers of Allah, they owe their allegiance to Allah, they owe their entire existence to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because He is their maker, they have become conscious of Allah once again. This is what is meant by the term dhikr, to remember Allah. Remember as in, I remembered Him. You know, for example, if uh, you forgot that someone was standing in front of you, and then a little while later, as you turned around, you remembered and then you turned around and you began to communicate with them once again. So similarly, and this is just an example, the meaning of the term remembrance in this instance would be that the person became oblivious of Allah momentarily and thereafter they remembered him. And when they remembered him, they immediately asked his forgiveness to say, I remember that I am the worshiper of Allah. I'm not supposed to be doing this. So this is one of the prime meanings of the term dhikrullah, to remember Allah in a beautiful way. Literally the meaning of the term remember in the English language. I remembered Allah. I was reminded of Allah. That is also a beautiful meaning of the term dhikr, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَذَكِّرْ فَإِنَّ الذِّكْرَى تَنْفَعُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ the word used is perhaps not the exact term dhikr, but in fact it is a term derived from that root, which means and remind, for indeed the reminder will believe those who benefit. Sometimes we repeat something, like when we hear a talk, perhaps when we hear some verses of the Quran, there is repetition of the reminder of salah. You find salah wa aqimu salah is in the Quran several times, many times. The, 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 uh, instruction of being truthful is there so many times in the Quran. One might ask, well, why is it? It should have just been there once and that's enough. It's a book of Allah. We would have read it. We would have known the message. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and remind and keep on reminding for definitely the reminder will benefit those who truly believe. So don't become upset when someone tells you once, they tell you twice, they tell you again and again. In fact, that is a sign that a true believer will actually take heed of. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a, uh, a goodness and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a turning to him. Amen. So 
The term dhikr here or dhakir would actually mean to remind. Also, the entire Quran has been referred to in it as the dhikr. Subhanallah, amazing. وَلَقَدْ يَسَّرْنَا الْقُرْآنَ لِلذِّكْرِ Allah speaks of the Qur'an and Allah says we have made it easy to understand. So here the term understanding is referred to using the word dhikr. And when it comes to the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about it, referring to it using the term dhikr. إِنَّا نَحْنُ نَزَّلْنَا الذِّكْرَ وَإِنَّا لَهُ لَحَافِظُونَ we have indeed revealed the dhikr to you, O Muhammad sallallahu and we will protect it. This is referring to the Quran, which means we have revealed the Quran to you, O Muhammad sallallahu and we will protect it. So if you and I were to read the Quran, we would be equivalent to the one who is doing the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is remembering Allah. In fact, one narration says that one of the best ways of remembering Allah is to read the Quran. So if you were to read the Quran, it is equivalent, if not better, than the one who might be sitting doing something else. But both of them could be referred to as the dhikr of Allah. Similarly, when someone is giving a lecture, a religious lecture, reminding you of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Quran uses the word dhikr for that as well. It's amazing. Look on a Friday, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu idha nudiya lissalati min yawmil jumu'ah fas'aw ila dhikri allahi wa dharul bay'ah O you who believe, when the caller calls out for the prayer on a Friday, then make haste to the lecture. Allahu Akbar. Make haste to the reminder and leave all your buying and selling, all your dealings. So the term dhikr is used to refer to the khutbah. A khutbah meaning a reminder. Someone is talking to you, reminding you of Allah. And this is why the Sahaba radiallahu anhum, when they used to uh, sometimes talk to each other, they used to refer to the address of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as dhikr. And they used to say, let's go and engage in dhikr for an hour. And what that would mean is, let's go and remind each other for a moment what our duties as Muslim uh, are. And this is the term dhikr used once again. So let's not have a shallow understanding of the term dhikr. It, we need to realize and understand it includes the Quran, the entire Quran. To learn it, to read it, to go into the tafsir of the Quran is actually known as dhikrullah. It is known as the remembrance of Allah. It is a very great form of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to go back to his word, to constantly repeat it, to go into its meaning, to fulfill it, to put it into practice, to convey it to others. All this is a part of dhikrullah. May Allah help us to engage in dhikr in all these forms. Similarly, the entire sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has been referred to as dhikr in the Quran. Allah uses the word dhikr to refer to the sunnah, the statements, the saying, the life of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his example. Allah says, وَأَنزَلْنَا إِلَيْكَ الذِّكْرَ لِتُبَيْنَ لِلنَّاسِ مَا نُزِّلَ إِلَيْهِمْ Allah says, and we have revealed to you, we have sent down to you the entire sunnah, the entire lifestyle and everything that you have done in order for you to clarify to the people what has been revealed to them in terms of the Qur'an. And from this verse, what we understand is the Qur'an was revealed. In order to be able to comprehend the Qur'an, we would have to go through the explanation and the lifestyle of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So part and parcel of revelation is the sunnah. We cannot just sit back and say, this is the Qur'an and I adopt it. But as for the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I do not adopt it. I utter la ilaha illallah, but I do not utter Muhammad Rasulullah. Astaghfirullah. That would be unacceptable. We need to utter both. We need to believe that Muhammad is the one chosen by Allah, Afdalul Khalq wa Akramul Rusul, the best of creation, the most noble of all the messengers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come and explain to us what the revelation was all about. And this is why it's wrong for you and I to translate and interpret the Quran as and when we like and wish without guidelines, without guidance. Guidance from where? Guidance from the sunnah of Muhammad from his lifestyle, from his words, from his instructions, from his explanations. All this is also known as dhikr. So for any one of us to go through the life of Muhammad we would be engaging in the dhikr of Allah. 
for any one of us to go through the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his statements, his words, subhanallah, we would be going through the dhikr of Allah. We would be engaging in the dhikr. This is why if you have a tafsir session, consider it the dhikr of Allah. If you have a hadith, be it for two or three minutes, be it for longer or shorter, consider it the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the highest form of ibadah you could have. Do not let shaitan distract you, making you believe and think for a moment that the term dhikr is a very short term where we just sit and we engage in something. A lot of the times we are guilty of praising Allah without really thinking what we are saying. Let's be honest. When we say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, sometimes, and this should be happening after every farad salah, as the hadith says, 33 times Subhanallah, 33 times Alhamdulillah, 34 times Allahu Akbar, or 33 times Allahu Akbar, and cap it with a beautiful statement, La ilaha illallah wahda, la sharika lahu lahu al-munku wa lahu al-hamd, wa huwa ala kulli shay'in qadir. All this in the praise of Allah, declaring your faith and your iman. This is a sunnah, but let's be honest, many times when we do say this, if we do say it, we are just paying lip service to it. Where we say Subhanallah, Alhamdulillah, Allahu Akbar, Subhanallah, 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 and we don't even think about it for a minute. Yet, the proper dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would mean that a person thinks, what am I saying? Praise be to Allah, Alhamdulillah, glory be to Allah, Subhanallah, Allah is the greatest, Allahu Akbar. Think about it, say, say it once, pause for a moment to think what you're saying, then repeat it again, then repeat it a third time. And you find the impact of it would cleanse your heart. It would actually give you a much more purified heart than a person who just pays lip service to the remembrance of Allah. So what is of importance, my beloved brothers and sisters, let us undertake for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us undertake to remember Allah in all these ways. Remind one another, obey the instruction of Allah. This is the dhikr of Allah. To be able to listen to the Quran, to be able to read it, to make an effort to improve your recitation of the Quran is also termed the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To sit with the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the hadith, to try and memorize a little bit, to try and teach it to others. This is all part of the dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Let us try and make sure by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we engage in all of these and we teach it to others and we convey the message. Yes, it is very, very important to be praising Allah, to declare the statement, for example, La ilaha illallah. It's a beautiful way of remembering Allah. It's a beautiful way of saying it. But what is the point of someone who keeps on praising Allah, but he does not know Allah's instruction because he's never been through the Quran. He's never been through the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu He does not like to sit in the lectures or the lessons. He does not attend the tafsir and explanation of the Quran. He does not attend the hadith explanation that might be happening in his masjid or elsewhere. And then he wants to say, I remember Allah morning and evening and night. But in what way? When I don't know your instruction, how am I going to be your servant? Subhanallah. If you want to be a servant somewhere, you need to go to your master or the one whom you are perhaps working for in the case of those who might be working for someone and ask them for instruction. What does my job entail? And they will dish out the instruction. They will give you a book or they will give you instruction or they will appoint someone to come to you to explain what you need to do if they don't do it themselves. Look at Allah. We are his servants. We are definitely the slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do you think he would, he would just require us to praise him and keep on praising him without wanting to know, okay, there are five salah a day. This is how you should fulfill them. This is what you should do. There is a dress code. There are do's and don'ts. No, that's not enough. We need to understand Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent to us the message. And he sent a messenger to explain the message. So to take a moment to try and understand that message is part and parcel of remembering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's part and parcel of fulfilling your duty towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why we are saying, take a moment, let us understand, my beloved brothers and sisters, this life is full of beauty. You know, Allah says, Zuyina linnas. You know, things have been made beautiful for people. The opposite sex has been made beautiful for people. Wealth has been made beautiful for people. So that is part of your test. When you see something beautiful or regarding this world or connected to this world, how do you approach it? Do you approach it according to the instruction of Allah? If you do, you will enjoy it within the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you approach it in your own way, doing whatever you please and will, then definitely you've lost the plot. And the reason why we say this is because 
death is a whisker away. None of us can guarantee that we're going to walk out of this place. No one. So in order for us to understand that we do have a more, you know, a higher purpose and a more noble cause, we need to think of death. Because death will actually destroy all our lusts and desires to make us think for a moment. Surely I need to prepare for the day I meet with Allah. I need to prepare for the day that I go back to my maker because I'm only here for a short period of time. There are people more good looking than me and people who have had more wealth than me and more power than me who are gone. No one mentions them, not at all. Perhaps you might remember them once in a while if they were powerful people. Oh, do you remember this guy? Yeah, he was a very good man. But you don't understand. You just use the past tense. He was, which means he's no more. And whether or not he has succeeded would depend on how much he has prepared for the day he will meet with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So take a moment to ensure that you engage in the seeking of forgiveness. That too is a great form of dhikr of Allah. When I say astaghfirullah, oh Allah forgive me. That's a great way of remembering Allah because that would mean I'm conscious of Allah and I'm worried about my hereafter. So I'm saying, oh Allah, forgive me. You have instructions. I acknowledge and I admit that I was wrong. I regret it. I'm asking your forgiveness and I won't do it again. That's the meaning of the term astaghfirullah. But let us never ever just pay lip service to the statements astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. Repeat them a hundred times, a thousand times, you know, sitting with beads and perhaps clocking a thousand, two thousand at a go when we haven't even thought for a moment what we've actually said. The sunnah, when it comes to uh, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the first way that we mentioned, and that is to repeat the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or to repeat statements of acknowledgement of his status or even that of forgiveness would be to count on your fingers. Like for example, when we complete the Farad Salah, the hadith says the sunnah is to say Subhanallah 33 times, Alhamdulillah 33 times, Allahu Akbar 33 or 34 times, depending on the narrations. How would we count it? The sunnah through your fingers, even your fingers will bear witness that you have actually, you have actually remembered Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. But like I said at the beginning, and I repeat it now, that is not the only meaning of the term remembrance of Allah. I hope and I pray we can actually talk to one another. When we go home, when we go to our workplaces, we can remind one another, look my brother, look my sister, my spouse, my daughter, whoever it is that you are going to be talking to. Let's remember the dhikr of Allah does not only mean to sit and to repeat the praise of Allah. It includes going into the tafsir. It includes going into the hadith. It includes knowledge. It includes lectures. It includes so much. All this is part of the dhikr and we've got this from the Quran itself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, may He forgive us, may He open our doors, may He make us truly from amongst those who engage in His dhikr in all these forms.